Hey, Wonder Hussy here. Getting ready to embark on an expedition to a site I've been wanting to visit for a long time. Back when I was making my video about the missing Death Valley Germans, uh, I got most of my information from this website called otherhand.org, which is basically a personal blog written by this, I think, retired physicist who enjoys exploring the desert, finding interesting and remote sites. And after I finished my Death Valley Germans video, I read some of his other blogs and he had this one really interesting adventure about trying to find the crash site of this super secret CIA spy plane that went down back in 1967. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not really that interested in military stuff and I'm not even really that interested in airplane stuff, but what I am interested in is interesting stuff in the desert that's really hard to get to. So reading this guy's blog and how hard it was for him to find the crash site really intrigued me. And even more intriguing, since he found it back in the 90s, several people have been out there to the crash site, but there's hardly any information about it anywhere online. Challenge accepted. Now, again, I'm not really an airplane person, but from what I was able to understand, basically on January 5th, 1967, this CIA pilot named Walter Ray was flying an A-12 on a test run out of Groom Lake, AKA Area 51. Basically, I guess the A-12 was like the predecessor to the SR-71 and it was such a top secret project that the CIA only referred to it by the code name Article 125. But apparently this plane could go at speeds up to Mach 3.2, which I guess is like 2,500 miles an hour, and it could fly at an altitude of 90,000 feet. Anyway, back in January of 67, Walter Ray was flying this A-12 on a test run all the way from Area 51 to St. Louis and back in something like four hours. And well, unfortunately, there was some kind of malfunction with the fuel gauges. And long story short, he ended up basically running out of gas and crashing in the desert just shy of Groom Lake. I guess he was able to eject from the aircraft, but there was some kind of mechanical malfunction with the pilot's ejection seat. Like there was some lever that was supposed to spring his body loose from the seat. And uh, well, unfortunately something went wrong with that. He got caught and ended up crashing and dying at the site. Now, of course, since this was such a top secret project, the government came out right away to clean up as much as they could. And well, I guess because of that, I sort of figured there probably wasn't going to be anything left there for me to see. And to be honest, I kind of put this adventure on the back burner because of that until by random coincidence, about six months ago, my boozy friend Scott happened to be drinking at a local bar here in Vegas. And he met a pilot who had been to that crash site several times. So this pilot gave Scott some information, including the fact that there is a monument at the crash site. So I looked into it and yeah, apparently there's a, a small scale replica of an A-12 mounted on a pole that was built and put there by this group of adventurers called the Strategic Beer Command. Well, once I found out there was a memorial at the site, I was really fired up to go out there and so was Scott. But you know how it is, life gets in the way and one thing after another and then the whole coronavirus pandemic and you weren't really supposed to be traveling around non-essential travel. Whatever the case, we never really got around to going out there until now. And coincidentally, it happens to be Memorial Day weekend, which is like the perfect time to go out there and honor this the memory of this guy who basically died in the service of his country. So Scott's actually headed over here now so we can do a little bit of planning before we head out on this expedition because this is really remote and really rugged territory and there's no gas stations, there's no cell signal. We have to make sure we know exactly what we're doing. We start to head basically northeast, 16,000 feet. We know now is about two and a half miles. I've got five gallons of gas just in case. There might be some areas that compromise the mission and then we start to head north, northeast. I mean east, east, north, and then we start to head north, northeast. Hey Scott, why are you so interested in going to this crash site? <laughs> because I know 
some things about avionics and aviation and pilots. We... Avionics? Is that even a word? Yeah. Do you have a, an interest in it because of your past military service? That too, yeah. I've always liked aircraft. But once. you weren't in the Air Force, you were in the Army. I was in the Army, but I was around aircraft. I flew in helicopters. Tell us about your service. Um, I spent four years in the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. Oh, okay, so you know your way around aircraft. A little bit, yeah. All right, Scott, you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's roll. All right. We successfully navigated the city and we've officially left the pavement. And of course, we had to stop and do what all good off-roaders do when they leave the pavement. What are you airing down to, Scott? Well, I'd like to go down to about 25, but well, they gain about five PSI when they get hot from when you leave your house. So if you're at 30 and you get on the highway- Gosh, I feel like as long as I live, I'll never know as much as Scott does. So those are the two highest points in front of us. We're gonna go right in between them and we're gonna get to the summit at 37, 37. We'll be camping at 5,500. 5,500? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you brought your long johns. I did. Cause you know I won't be keeping you warm. <laughs> Boing. Okay, Scott's gonna go ahead and I'm gonna follow behind him. There he goes. He brought his mountain bike because he thought that might be useful for doing recon to try to find this memorial if the road becomes impassable. Golly, what staggering country this is. I mean, look how beautiful. It's springtime, it's May, uh, gosh, I don't even know, May 25th or so. And we've gotten a lot of rain this spring, so everything's green and gorgeous, and the road stretches on forever and ever and ever. Oh, it's just about my favorite thing to do, is drive down a road like this and find out where it leads. Almost there. About three more miles to go to the place we chose as our base camp. Since I don't think we're gonna be able to drive to the actual memorial site, uh, it's supposed to be a really, really rough road. We're gonna base camp at this old mine that's only, oh, I think it's less than two miles from the memorial site. I'm letting Scott take the lead so he can feel like a man. Scott really prides himself on his navigational skills. So I think that's another reason why he wants to lead. Uh, because he figured out the route on his paper maps, which is a smart thing to do. And I did the same thing, looked at my atlas, but hey, guess what? The dang mine we're going to is on frigging Google Maps. So I was able to just plug it into my navigation system and follow the directions that way. But shh, don't tell Scott. <laughs> Woohoo, okay, we made it to the mine. Scott went ahead because he's trying to locate I guess there was an airstrip up here where the military flew in to do the recovery mission. So I guess he's trying to orient himself relative to the airstrip so he knows where the, the memorial site is. He's putting all that military training to good use. Now, my feminine intuition tells me that this airstrip that he's looking for is probably there's a road that goes across this valley and it's real straight and flat. And sure, at one time it might have been an airstrip, but in the intervening, what is it, 60 some odd years, it's become a Jeep road. And my hunch is that the memorial is on the other side of that bluff. So if we would have just kept taking that road through there, that would take us to the memorial. But Scott needs to do his orienting. Okay, Scott scouted out a nice flat place to camp, sort of uphill from the mine. And we went around to collect some wood, make a little fire. All right, dinner time. There's my dish. And Scott, what are you having for dinner? That's what I'm having. Gentleman Jack. Nothing wrong with a little nip. Good morning. <laughs> Ugh. Man, that was kind of a late night last night. Scott likes to party. And well, I woke up earlier than Scott. He still passed out. I gotta be real quiet. Um, I'm boiling some water, I'm gonna make some coffee. Man, I don't know, I couldn't sleep because oh, well, I feel like a kid on Christmas. I'm really excited to go try to find this memorial. Uh, Scott's awake. Hey, how'd you sleep, Scott? I slept pretty good. How do you feel uh, about the today's chances? I think they're pretty good. I think we have some pretty good intel. 
Okay, so we have a plan. We're gonna do some vehicular recon in my rig. According to the intel I have, we should be able to drive a little bit farther down the road towards the memorial site and then hike the rest of the way. So Scott's loading his gear into my forerunner. Wait, we need to put a flag on our truck. Uh-oh, Scott brought some uh, miniature flags so we can put one on the grave of Walt Ray because it is Memorial Day weekend. It sure is. So you want to put one on the truck too, huh? Oh, wow, Yeah, look, just yeah. film it in the wind blowing and you could use it as B-roll. Thank you, Spielberg. <laughs> do you want to put one on the other side too so it's like an official sure. diplomatic vehicle? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, now we're really rolling official. We're on a mission. This state's our mission. According to the topo, that's the canyon we're going into. If we were to hike up that ridge to the top mm. of that ridge there and go down, that's where the landing zone is. And uh, Ray's memorial is on the opposite side. It's on the eastern flank of the next valley. Okay, we're gonna part ways. Scott's gonna hike on foot to try to get through that little dip there. I saw, or we both saw the remnants of a road up ahead, so I'm gonna try to off-road a little bit farther because the intel I received said I could go up until a, I hit a boulder. So I'm looking for that. And we're bringing our radios so we can still be in communication and if we get separated, well, we're just gonna meet back at camp. Are you ready, soldier? I am. Be safe. You got the radio. Worst case situation, I'm gonna go into this canyon. If I don't think for sure I'm on track, I'll go back to camp. Okay, well how about just radio me? Let's just give a quick one. Okay. Wonder how see this is juice. Copy that. All right, they work from four feet away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you, good luck. Okay, now let's drive over and try to find this road. <laughs> Yeah, I caught up with Scott. Apparently we were both on the, basically the same track. You're gonna continue on foot, soldier? I am, I'm gonna, it's gonna get pretty narrow in here. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep driving until I get to this boulder where I can't drive anymore and then I'll park there. Okay, rendezvous at the boulder. Okay, I've gone about a mile and a half from the turnoff and I still haven't seen any kind of boulder blocking my way. So I thought, let me get out and do some uh, binocular work and see if I can see anything here. Okay, I climbed up on top of my car so I could have uh, maximum visibility and well, check out these wild horses. They're all hanging out up there on the ridge. Look at the little babies, Oh, Still haven't seen any kind of boulder blocking my way. I'm probably just gonna turn around and head back and try to meet up with Scott and I guess head out on foot with him. Okay, I turned around and reconnected with Scott and well, we decided to park. It was kind of like a, well, almost kind of like a junction. Uh, and when I was rolling solo, I went down that way but there's kind of like an old, well, maybe remnants of an old Jeep road this way as well. So we're gonna follow this for a little bit on foot. This isn't really like drivable. And see if this looks any anything uh, promising. I don't know though, to me this doesn't really look like an old Jeep track. It looks like a horse trail, but shh, don't tell Scott. According to this, if we are going up this wash. Hmm. Well, you know, let's go another, let's go another 10. So you want to go all the way over into that next valley yeah. just to call this one a for sure no. Okay, but for the record, I feel like we're on a wild goose chase. Okay, finally we're retreating. Back to the car, plan B. We're gonna go down the road that I traveled and have Scott take a look with his superior navigation and observational skills. Okay, so we finally got back to where I was uh, parked and, well, Scott, with his eagle eyes, astutely noticed that there are some old tin cans here. I, I missed those. And I guess the military, when they came out here to do the recovery effort, uh, they left behind some uh, ration cans. Those are pretty old cans. All right, well, we're feeling a little discouraged. 
Nothing looks like the pictures. Uh, well, we still kind of have an ace in the hole. Uh, one of the people I was getting intel from said I could call him if I get stumped and he would help me. But we kind of want to save that till we really need it. We found one more sort of turn off that we're exploring, but it wasn't really, it didn't seem drivable at first. So proceeding on foot, Scott's already up ahead. I'm bringing him his gear. Okay, Scott pooped out. And to be fair, he's done more hiking than I have today. So he went back to wait where I left the car or wait in the shade. And I thought I'd hike up this wash just a little bit farther because, well, it does look like there's tire tracks here. Someone's driven up here recently. And why would they have? Unless there was something good down here. But I'm facing quite a hike because I gotta go around this and then back through there. Which is why Scott decided to go wait back in the shade. It's kind of a hike, but I don't mind. And I also like the look of this wash because remember my Intel person told me my car would probably be able to make it up the road until I reached a big boulder. Well, there's a lot of rocks in this wash and well, I'm guessing there, one of them might come up as a big boulder. Oh, look, old pieces of wood. I wonder if this could be the remnants of this mine camp that I'm supposed to pass along the way. I don't see any evidence of mining up here though. Okay, gosh, I don't see how any car, even a Jeep could make it up this. And it's not just a boulder, it's like many boulders, so. Oh my goodness, I don't know. Oh wait, what's this? Oh, well, it's steel cable. Could be mining wreckage. And then it looks like that doesn't look natural. That's a milled piece of lumber, you can see. Okay, well, it looks like a road kind of did start up again, climbing up out of the wash. I'll follow this. I don't know, man. I mean, I might just be delusional from the heat and exhaustion but I feel, I feel like I might be onto something here. Okay, wow. I think I might've finally reached this mine camp they were talking about because look, substantial amount of metal around here. There's another wire. There's a, looks like part of a chair. Oh gosh, there's a bunch of stuff here. This must be the mine camp, but I don't see supposedly the timbers from this mine are laying on the ground somewhere. The head frame fell down years ago, I was told, but the timbers are still laying somewhere on the ground. Golly, I don't see any evidence of mining, but I suppose this could be the ruins of a mine camp. Well, gosh, I don't know. I don't wanna hike any farther up this valley because I've been gone for almost an hour and I don't want Scott to worry. He's all the way back down there. But I thought for sure I was on the right track because that mine camp is right around the corner there. I kind of lost track of the road from that point. And to be honest, I got kind of excited because I saw those rock outcroppings. And well, they might have distracted me from paying attention to what the road actually was. Okay, whew. <laughs> Just when I gave up and was headed back down, I finally got a walkie-talkie transmission from Scott and he decided to hike up and well, I'm headed back up into that valley again, uh, just to see what it looks like with a fresh set of eyes. Uh, I don't know, man. Like I said, I had a good feeling about this area. Just look, mine tailings up ahead. Oh, a symbol of hope. I didn't see that on my, my way up or down. And this looks like we might almost be back on a road of sorts. Well, the only thing we found up here is this old mine claim and that's not really gonna tell us anything. Scott seems very disheartened, and I think he just wants to turn back and give up. So Scott's really tired, and I think he's dehydrated, and he's kind of grumpy. So we're just headed back down to the car. Um, he feels that we pretty much exhausted this area. It's not here. And, oh my gosh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's confirmation bias, but it felt like we really did pass that mine camp. And then there's this little... What looks like could be a mine behind me here. And those were two of the things we we're supposed to pass on the way to this memorial. Now, like I said, I do have that one ace in the hole. I can call my intel person 
and he gave me his phone number and he said call me if you can't find it and I mentioned that to Scott but well you know how men don't like asking for directions so I almost get the feeling he wants to give up and go home and if that's the case I might stay here one more night by myself and just call this guy in the morning because by golly I want to find this memorial okay far out apologies for the wind noise but well Scott was tired and discouraged let's just say so we went back to camp and we were kind of like considering our options and well he decided he'd rather just get a good night's sleep and then drive home in the morning well I don't want to give up so I knew he he didn't want any clues from my intel person so I respect that he want, really wants to try to use it finding his own army navigational skills and that's cool so I hiked out of camp out of earshot from him and to where I could get cell signal and well I did I called my intel guy and he gave me some very detailed information on how to get there so I'm hiking there in the morning. I don't know if Scott's going to want to come with me or not. I was thinking, well, maybe I just need to finesse it. Like, if I go back to camp and t if I go back to camp and tell Scott, hey, I know exactly where it is, well, he'll be all grumpy. Like, I'm not going. You know, I want to find it myself. But if I go back to camp and go, oh my gosh, I found out where it is. And we were so close. You were so close. I think you can find it using your navigational skills. You know, if I kind of butter him up like that. He might actually reattempt it with me tomorrow, so we'll see. Good news. <laughs> I told Scott about my phone call, and he actually seems amenable to reattempting the hike tomorrow. My finessing worked. <laughs> in fact, he's in such a good mood now that <laughs> he's playing the saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the next morning, and guess who paid us a visit at our camp? The wild horses. Woo! We saw so many wild horses yesterday. Scott's trying to lure them over. Hey, Scott, maybe you should play your saxophone. <laughs> Scott, what's your what's your deal today? You don't want to go? I'm not feeling it. I'm pretty uh, tuckered, and uh, I don't think that the intel you got is uh, legit. Okay, well... I'm still gonna go, I'm motivated. I wanna salute our fallen hero on this Memorial Day because I'm a true patriot. I may not have ever been a soldier, but I do know how to embrace the suck. All right, this is it. Scott for sure is uh, tapping out, so I'm on this mission solo now. I'm special ops and he's special pops. All right, Scott, I'll be in touch. Hey, do me a favor. If you get a signal out at the site, uh -huh. text me. Okay. And say, let me know you found it. Let me know you're okay. Okay. I'll be in touch. <laughs> All right. I'm hiking up. I feel really good about this hike because I did most of it yesterday. I mean, we were so close to this dang memorial. You know, just doing our own recon. And in Scott's defense, I have to give him credit, he did look at a topo map and navigate us down this canyon, or down that canyon. But I think that his problem was, by the time we actually hiked up this, this was like our third attempt yesterday, and he had done probably four or five miles at that point, and it was hot, and well, he was just too tired to really see look around him and see that that was it, man. That was the valley. Okay, making good time. I've already made it to that mine camp. So, gosh, I think I might be like a third of the way. I mean, one of the reasons we gave up yesterday was we lost complete track of the road and we couldn't find any signs of anything touched by man anywhere in this remote valley but today i'm hiking along following my point and i did i came across what i'm pretty sure is the road and there's well, i don't know if that's a footprint but i have seen footprints in the sand so someone's been up here fairly recently okay well looking at my google map it looks like i don't need to hike any further up this valley which is a shame because scott and i did yesterday we were so close but 
my Google map shows that now I need to turn east. I need to turn east. Okay, so I'm gonna go, like I feel like this maybe was a road at one time. And I think the memorial, it's up on that hillside somewhere, kind of near one of those rock outcroppings. There definitely was a road to this memorial site uh, because the memorial is placed at the, well, at the site where they've recovered his body. So they had to have a road to that place so they could recover his remains, unfortunately. So that's why this road exists in the first place. But gosh, that was 53 years ago and it's pretty overgrown. So it's really hard to follow. Still don't see it. Hike a little farther up. Ah, I see it. Ah! Ah! Whoa, man. Well, you guys probably can't see it, but it's up straight ahead on top of that boulder a yeah, little right in the middle there that's it <laughs> persistence pays off again i don't want to get so excited that i lose track of where i'm stepping because this seems like very rattlesnakey country <laughs> you know what i mean and i am all alone and i don't know if there's any cell signal here but if there is the first person i'm gonna call is scott <laughs> neener neener da na na Da -da -na -da -da -da. There it is, the memorial to Walt Ray and the Crash J12. I don't want to be too, you know, laugh too much here because let's remember this is where a man died and it was a terrible crash. So let me just go ahead and show you guys this memorial. Okay, so this is a scale replica of the A12 that, well, you can see on the base there, it's bolted to the rock. Uh, by the SBC, which is the Strategic Beer Command. Really honorable organization. They do good work. They placed it there in 2014, and look how solidly that's bolted on. That's not going anywhere. And what's more, they made this. They cut this out of, gosh, sheet metal, I think. Look at the craftsmanship on that. It's beautiful. Really a nice job, guys. Oh, I listen. Not sure if you can hear the wind whistling through there, but it sounds kind of eerie. Almost like the whine of a jet engine. And then, well, it tapers to a little point there. And what's more, it's oriented, pointing directly towards Groom Lake, where it was supposed to, where he was supposed to have landed. So Groom Lake, Area 51, is straight that way. I think he was only like 70 miles away from landing safely at Groom Lake. Man, like less than 10 minutes. It's just terrible. Happened so close to the end of his route, man. Man, what a place to go down, gosh. I mean, it's a beautiful valley, very peaceful, but it wouldn't have been very peaceful that day. Matter of fact, I think the, uh, the way that the guys who originally found this site figured out where it was, they uh, called the miners or spoke to one of the miners. He used to live in that mine camp that we passed, I think. And of course they were here still working that claim back then. And they heard the crash and well, then they saw all the military coming in, building this road and doing this whole recovery mission. And so apparently this one old timer miner was an invaluable resource as to locating this site. Okay, so in addition to this awesome scale replica, there's also a plaque these guys made. Well, you might not be able to read it, but it says Walter L. Ray in service of his country, 5 January, 1967. That was the date his plane went down. Okay, and then besides the, the um, model, the plaque, well, there's also an ammo can here, like a trail register. Let's see who was here last. <laughs> Okay, oh look, 5-16-2020, that's only like a week ago. Oh, and look, they put uh, messages to Ray, that's so cute. Frank Murray says he misses your smiling face, and when we got to do our thing, it was very successful, except that we lost Jack Weeks, RIP, Dutch 20. Oh, look at this, <laughs> the minor militia was here back in 2018, that's funny. So, okay, there's a bunch of, well, I don't want these to blow away. Look, this ammo can is actually bolted to the rock, that's hardcore. Oh, look. I think these are actual pieces of the plane. Holy cannoli, look at that. Dang, I don't know what kind of, is that aluminum? I thought that thing was made out of titanium. Amazing, and then here's a couple other little pieces. Oh look, there's some, and then all there really is in here is, uh, there's, well there's some pens so we can sign the thing, and some beer bottle caps, you know, strategic beer command. Oh look, and it's a, 
like a little piece of wire from the aircraft. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, and then there's some more papers. Oh yeah, look, there's a whole, uh, like a dossier on the crash and the guy. Oh, awesome, we'll check that out for sure. These are just blank papers, I think, for future people to sign their names on. So put those back in there for now. And let's check out this dossier. Okay, so the cover has a picture. This is what he looked like. This was Walt Ray. Looks like a nice guy. Nice straight arrow. Look at that. You could set your watch to that haircut. Like a straight up American hero. Dutch 45, I guess that was his call sign. <laughs> oh, apologies if I'm sniffling, but my allergies are going nuts. Okay, so this basically just says what I told you. An A-12 was lost on 5 January 1967 during a training sortie flown from Groom Lake. Its pilot, Walter L. Ray, became the first CIA pilot killed in the line of duty and is so honored in the Book of Honor in CIA, at the CIA headquarters in McLean, Virginia. If you go to the Roadrunners International website, they have all this online. So if you're interested in reading it, and you, I encourage you to read it, it's really interesting, you can go there and check it out. I'm just going to kind of browse through here. Here's a picture of him and his wife. I think they'd only been married for three months. Yeah. When he took off and had that fatal accident. Look at his wife, though. Beautiful. Oh, man. He looks so happy. Oh, poor guy. So the rest of this talks about the details of the accident, how he was running out of gas. Here's a picture of the Book of Honor in the on the memorial wall at the CIA headquarters where he's mentioned. And then there's some information about the guy who built the memorial here this guy from wisconsin really cool i mean this guy went to a lot of trouble first of all to make this friggin' thing out of metal and then come out here and bolt it to this rock it was a i think it was a family affair Look, his daughter's helping oh cute love it Look, this chick's got the friggin' drill that's boss i mean i know it's memorial day today and i'm really here to salute walt ray but i also want to salute the strategic beer command for making this awesome memorial because this is cool. It's a really nice way to remember this guy. I'm sure his widow appreciated it. And well, it gave me an amazing adventure to undertake. So thank you. Okay, put all these back in order and put them back in the ammo can, just like we found them there. And now it's time to sign our name on one of these cards. Okay, I wrote, Wonder Hussy from YouTube here on Memorial Day to pay tribute to this fallen hero. RIP Walter Ray. Thank you, and thanks to the SBC for installing this memorial. Much respect to all. Sarah Jane slash Wonder Hussey 52520. Put that in the box. And you know what I'm going to do? Well, I have these uh, small American flags that I brought. I was going to leave one. Oh, gosh, I was going to leave one on the memorial, but I don't know, man. It's so windy up here. I bet I, I'll figure out a way I can secure it uh, really well. But I'm going to leave. I have a few flags. Scott did provide these flags. He went and got them, so there's a few of them. I'm gonna put one in the ammo can. Just seems like kind of a nice thing to do. And then I'll lock that back up. Got it. And then I think I might be able to put this one in here behind the, uh, the plaque if I wedge it in here. Oh yeah, that's not going anywhere. Okay, now that I got the flag placed, well, it's time to have a moment of silence for Walter Ray. Gosh, what an amazing adventure. I'm so glad I did it. I'm glad I didn't give up. I would have enjoyed having Scott here with me and well, I'm sure he'll come hike to this spot sometime himself. But for now, I'm just gonna leave my respects here and make my way back home. Scott and I, like I said, were really close yesterday. I mean, really close. We actually hiked past it up to, well, you can't see now because I've already hiked down, but there's like a saddle. We hiked all the way up to the top of the saddle back there, well past the memorial. And I distinctly remember saying to Scott, you know, we had this one kind of screenshot that we were trying to match up the landscape to. And I go, you know, I bet it's on one of these rock outcroppings up here. And he goes, no, it was on a lone outcropping. There was nothing around it. He had just naysayed it. He poo pooed my suggestion. And in his defense, he was just tired and dehydrated and cranky. But, well, Scott, if you would have listened to me, we would have found it yesterday. <music> Woohoo! Made it back to my car. Changed into some uh, more comfortable clothes for the drive home. I feel great. 
I'm really glad that I didn't get discouraged and that I persevered. And for that, why, by golly, I think I deserve a promotion. From now on, I should be known as General Hussey. Actually, I think there really was a General Hussey or an Admiral Hussey. I'm not sure, one or the other. Anyway, I'm gonna jump in my trusty steed and ride off into the sun, well, the afternoon. See you next time. Okay, wait, hold everything. Now I know some of you watching this video probably think Scott's a royal jerk because he, well, left me alone to hike to a treacherous spot in the mountains. But guess what? Scott's here. <laughs> he packed up camp and he's hanging out in the shade. He made it. What are you doing? I was waiting for your ass. What's that? It's a Hefeweizen. <laughs> Let's have a celebratory nip. Oh God, I told you he's a boozer. Wow, what is that? This is a peppermint schnapps my nephew made me. Oh, homemade peppermint schnapps. Why does it look like Windex? It's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's Air Force blue. Oh, okay. What about CIA blue? Yeah, well, I guess State Department. Okay. So this is to uh, Walt Ray and his uh, Service to our country, unknown service. Salud. All right, well, it's almost noon. <laughs> <laughs> Salud, Walt Ray. Mm. You know what? Mm, that is good. In honor of the Strategic Beer Command, we are forming our own brigade, the Strategic Schnapps Command. <laughs> Cheers.